In this video, I'm gonna be covering everything you need to know about email marketing to really help your business thrive, as well as the four pillars that you can start implementing to make sure more of your emails are getting opened every single time. Let's get into it. So firstly, we need to address what is email marketing? Why is it even important? Well, to begin with, email marketing in a nutshell is really just about building relationships either with potential customers or existing customers. The goal with potential customers is to build that trust and build that relationship to the point that people are ready to make their first purchase with you. And for existing customers, the goal is to build that relationship to the point people become raving fans and actually end up promoting your business and also to get them to buy from you more often or maybe in higher amounts. You might be wondering why we're we even talking about email marketing when you've got you know platforms like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, you can build up your followings, you can build messenger bots and chat bots and funnels and everything else out there. Well, to put it simply, your email subscribers are a tangible business asset. You see, when somebody opts into your email list as a subscriber, that is now an asset that you own in the business. The difference between email versus, you know, building a following on Facebook, building a following on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever it might be, those followers, those page likers, those subscribers, you don't own them. The platform owns them. And you can have your platform, you can have your account banned, you can have it hacked, you can have it removed, and you can potentially lose all of those subscribers in the blink of an eye. I've seen this happen time and time again to businesses who have put everything into building their following, building their subscribers, only to lose it all. So it puts you in a very, very vulnerable position is if all you're doing is trying to build out your social platforms or your messenger bot lists or whatever it is. Email on the other hand, again, that is data that you now own because people have opted in to receive communications from you. Now the big question on everyone's mind is, well look, it's 2022 now, does email even still work when there's so many other things out there? And the short answer is yes, but there's a very, very big caveat here. It is harder than ever to get people to open your emails. And if you're anything like me, you probably maybe have one or two people or companies in your email that you're subscribed to that you actually open emails from. And then you probably have tens or hundreds even that you just ignore and scroll past every time. So the goal we want to achieve here is to obviously become the kind of go-to source for whatever it is you're providing. Those emails that people open every single time because of the amount of value you are giving. So this brings me on to what I would say are the four critical pillars that you need to be doing in your email marketing so that you become the company that gets opened versus the company that gets scrolled past every single time. So the first is having a strong opt-in. The second is audience segmentation. The third is having a unique style. And the fourth is adding a ton of value. So let me break each one of these down individually. So having a strong opt-in is not only going to allow you to get more email subscribers, but it's also going to give people more of a reason and an incentive to want to open your emails in the first place. So the problem most businesses have is they only ever create content or speak to people who are ready to buy right now. But here's the reality, most people that come to your site or discover your brand for the first time are not going to be ready to buy in that first interaction. So ideally what you you want to do here is create what we would call a lead magnet. Now a lead magnet in simple terms is just something of value that you can give in exchange for somebody's details. So let's say for example you're a mortgage broker. A good example of a lead magnet here might be seven things that you must know before you take out your first mortgage. So there's two key elements with this. One is it's got curiosity, so it makes me want to find out what those seven things are. It has specificity in the number seven, and it also, most importantly, is helping me progress along that buyer journey. So again, if I'm just at that research phase and I'm not yet looking to contact companies, which a lot of people won't be because they don't wanna be sold to, but it allows me to give value to that individual by helping them progress along that journey without even having to speak to 
21 at this stage. Or let's say for example, you're a health food store. Maybe you could offer something like four surprisingly common foods that have amazing health benefits plus recipe pack. So again, we've got the specificity, we've got the curiosity elements with the surprisingly common foods. And again, if somebody is on a health food store website, it's probably because they're looking to lead a healthier lifestyle. So we're also helping them by giving them that value to start their journey before they're actually ready to buy. Another tip I would give you about your opt-ins is try to capture people's first name where possible so you're not just asking for email address. The reason you want to get people's first name is because when you start actually emailing, it's going to allow those emails to become much more personal, which in turn is going to significantly increase the amount of people who open them. Because if you just think about it for yourself, if you got an email from somebody that said, hey guys, or it said, you know, special offer for all of our subscribers versus if it was an email that said special offer for Jessica, special offer for John, or whatever your name is. If you feel like it's for you, you are going to be much more likely to open it. So try to capture first name wherever you can. This pillar was segmentation. And segmentation is really about segmenting your email subscribers firstly by where they've opted in. So what particular lead magnet they've opted in for because that gives you a real clue as to where they are in the buyer journey and what they're interested in. And also segmenting based on their interaction. So what kind of emails are they opening the most? When you can segment people based on these things, it will allow you to tailor and only send emails to a relevant portion of your audience who are most likely to engage with and interact with. The issue most businesses have is they just send broad emails out to all of their subscribers when these are all different individuals with different wants, needs and desires. So when you can learn to segment through opt-ins and also looking at the behavior of your email subscribers as to which emails are they gravitating toward more. In a nutshell, this helps you to maintain your open rates over time and therefore increase the amount of revenue that you are able to generate from email marketing because your emails are actually getting read. Now, the next thing is having a unique style so that your emails become memorable because if they don't, people are simply going to get bored and stop opening them. But one of the biggest things that's going to have an impact here is working on your brand tone of voice. How do you communicate with customers? Is it fun? Is it quirky? Is it engaging? To give you an example of tone of voice, I always talk about um, the brand Innocent Smoothies. If you have a look at their website or any of their communication style, they have a very fun and quirky way of communicating with customers. Now there's lots and lots of different um, tones of voice out there and this really comes down to how do you want to be seen as a brand, but making sure that you do it in a way that's unique and memorable and leaves an impression on your audience so they know what they're going to get. Now last but not least, and probably one of the most important parts in fact, is delivering a ton of value. Because here's the thing with email marketing, if all you are doing with your email marketing campaigns is sending constant promotions, <laughs> again, people are simply going to stop opening your emails. So you need to learn how to entertain your audience, how to educate them, how to bring them genuine value. The key here is just to really think about where are my audience right now before they buy my product? Really think about who is my customer avatar. If you haven't created a customer avatar or buyer persona for your business yet, I highly suggest you do that. I'm gonna to link to a video up here somewhere that breaks down exactly how to create a buyer persona for your business. Because once you understand your buyer persona and where it is that this individual is looking to get to, what they want to achieve, what are their fears, their dreams, their doubts and desires, you know what content is best going to serve them. Because ultimately, every time you deliver value to that individual on your email list, you are helping to build trust. And the more they trust you, the more they are likely to buy from you. And also, the more likely they are to turn into raving fans. And like we talked about earlier, you will end up with people who literally, on your email list, they will be telling all of their friends, their connections, their family about you because they just get so much from you. And when you can get to that stage, you have effectively built a marketing army who is going to promote your business for you. I'm also going to link to an email marketing masterclass that we did recently in the description below this video where we show you behind the scenes of our own email marketing automations and how we use that to 
build the relationship with our subscribers and turn those leads into eventually buyers and paying customers. So make sure you save that link below so you can come back to it at the end of this video. Now the next thing we obviously need to cover is how do you even do all of this, right? Well, that's where you're going to need some email marketing software. Now, as you've probably seen as if you've been doing some research on this, there are so many different options out there when it comes to email marketing and quite frankly, it can be a bit overwhelming. I'm not here to tell you that one is necessary better than the other and to be honest I think it comes down to preference a lot of the time there are lots of different email platforms some of them go for more advanced features for those of you who are maybe a bit geeky you like to dive into automations and the technical setup there are other platforms which are much more user-friendly but basic so it's really going to depend on your preference what you're looking to achieve your ambitions but some of the most common ones for example if you're in the b2b space I personally think are some of the best email email marketing or CRM marketing automation platforms out there are Active Campaign, which is one that we personally use, and also HubSpot. Now, if you're in the e-commerce space, one of the most common ones is MailChimp. The great thing about MailChimp is it's very, very user-friendly. Another one is Klaviyo, which gives you much more advanced marketing features like automations, text messaging. It's slightly more complex to use and maybe has a steeper learning cycle but it allows you much greater control to be able to build that email list over time. Both Klaviyo and MailChimp also have free plans to start with, so they're great platforms to begin with as well. Now finally, let's talk about the metrics that you're going to be tracking to monitor your email marketing performance over time. There's really going to be two core metrics with email marketing. One of those is going to be your open rate, and the other is going to be your click-through rate. Now when it comes to your open rate, the main thing that's going to help Help you here is your subject line. Subject lines are so important for your open rate because that's what's going to stop people as they are scrolling through their emails. So like I mentioned earlier about trying to capture people's first name on the opt-in, just putting somebody's name in the subject line can significantly increase the amount of opens that you are getting on that email. So for example, instead of saying special offer, maybe it could say, I've got a gift for you, Tom. Now the key to increasing your click-through rate is going to be the body copy of the email. So the body copy is effectively what you're writing, the text that you're writing in the email itself. So if your emails are very, very long, very wordy, there's no breaks in the sentences, it's going to be an absolute nightmare and people are just gonna ignore it and click out of the email. If you can make your emails fun, quick, to the point, segmented, broken down into lots of sentences so it's easy to read, people are gonna be much more likely to engage, to read it and therefore to click through. Now two other ways of increasing your click-through rate are to one, make sure that it's wrapped up in a compelling offer. So for example, if I was getting somebody to come through and click onto a blog, I would want to inject some curiosity there. So maybe I would say, in this blog I break down how we helped a customer generate £100,000 in revenue in 90 days or whatever it is. So there's some curiosity, there's an incentive for people to want to click. The other thing you can do that's very easy is just make sure the call to action is bold, prominent, maybe put arrows either side of it, so it's very, very clear where you want people to look and where you want them to click. Now I go into some much deeper insights and more strategies onto how to affect these numbers and ultimately turn more of those subscribers into paying customers in the email masterclass I talked about, which is linked to in the description below this video. So there you have it guys, I really hope this video has helped to get you started on your email marketing journey. The next video coming up, I'm going to be talking about how to start creating a lead magnet or a powerful opt-in like we talked about for your business. So make sure you stick around for that one and I'll see you there.